Okay, boys and girls, so um, I'm going to work through um, the classroom activity pack with you. Well, read through it. So last week, um, the activity that we did with the paper helicopters came from this same um, publisher, okay? Primary Science Ireland, and they have a lot of classroom activity packs. And I'm looking at the ones on forces at the moment. Okay, so last week we looked at air resistance. Um, today we're going to focus on gravity, which also we looked at last week. Um, but here there's another experiment that you can easily do at home that I think is quite fun. Okay, um, so at the top it tells you the different equipment that you need, but you won't need all of that because we're not going to do all of the activities. Okay, we've already covered some of them. Um, so I'll just read through the background information for you, okay? It says, gravity is a very useful force. It holds everything together. It keeps us on the Earth and keeps the Earth and the other planets revolving around the Sun. Without it, everything would float around. That is why it has been described as the universal glue, the glue that holds the universe together. Every object in the world has this pulling force of gravity. The bigger the object, the greater the force. Earth is so big and heavy that its force of gravity is very great. The nearer things are to each other, the greater the force of gravity between them. The moon is much smaller than the Earth. It's about the same width as Australia. Because of this, it is not nearly as heavy as the Earth. And so gravity is much weaker there. In fact, gravity on the moon is only about one sixth of gravity on the Earth. So if you think to the video that we looked at the moon landing um, in 1969, I think it was, and um, remember Neil Armstrong and some other men, they landed on the moon. And um, I think we watched the video last year in black and white. You can look it up on YouTube if you can't remember. Or maybe it was the year before that I did it with my other class. I think I did it with you guys. Anyway, um, you can kind of see that they, they're jumping rather than just walking on the moon. That's because gravity does not hold them down to the earth or to the moon like we are held down to the earth. Anyway, back to the reading. Until Galileo's time, which is around 1600 AD, 400 years ago, people thought that heavier things fell faster than light things. Galileo was an Italian scientist who experimented. Well, up to then, they mainly just thought and found that things with different weight fell at approximately the same speed. So this was illustrated very well in the video that Rosella sent to me last week, um, where they dropped the bowling ball and the feather inside a vacuum chamber. Okay, so a vacuum chamber, is somewhere where there's no air, they've sucked out all the air. So once you take away air resistance, the feather and the bowling ball fell at exactly the same speed. I thought that was really, really good, that video. If you haven't watched it yet, look back on last week's um, science work and have a look, check it out. Next part, what is weightlessness? Now, weightlessness means that something has no weight. Okay, but it doesn't actually mean that. Let's have a read what it means. Why do we see pictures of astronauts bouncing around weightless inside their spacecraft? Is this because there is no gravity in space? No, there is gravity in space. Otherwise, the spacecraft would just float off into the universe. The astronauts appear to float because of weightlessness inside the space spaceship. The spacecraft and the astronauts are both moving together under the influence of gravity. This is called free fall or weightlessness. And the nearest feeling we get to this is when we're in a lift which goes down very suddenly. Have you ever been in a lift, an elevator, that goes down very suddenly? I kind of feel a funny, strange sensation in my tummy when that happens. I haven't been on a roller coaster in a long time, but I remember that as well. It's like nearly that your tummy nearly goes up into your mouth. I don't know, the feeling is really weird. Okay, so maybe you have experienced that feeling. And they say that's the nearest feeling that we can get here on Earth to the free fall or weightlessness. I don't know if you ever have it. Sometimes I, I wake up from a dream. It's, I'm not really sure if it's a dream, but 
it's like you feel like you're falling through the bed it wakes you up maybe it feels a bit like that i don't know <laughs> maybe i'm just strange have you ever had a dream like that anyway and um, we're going to skip on okay we're going to have a look here where it says history okay it says aristotle was a very early greek scientist he was around uh, more than 300 years before the birth of christ so that's nearly 2400 years ago and he said that heavy objects fall faster than light ones his ideas and many other areas he, his ideas on this and many other areas in science were believed by most people for nearly 2,000 years. Then Galileo and Newton came along and proved him wrong. So another thing he said was that the Earth was at the center of the universe. And we know that's not true. Okay, so the top, uh, the, it says the first experiment here, okay, is uh, dropping things of a different weight and you can see there an experiment that was um that was carried out on the leaning tower of pisa do you know where the leaning tower of pisa is now you can go down to the very bottom of this document okay and you can click on it where is it let me see you can click on it and it will here you have an interactive website testing galileo's famous experiment Okay, so you can have a look at that there. Um, I'll come back up now. Sorry about this. It's the easiest way that I can explain it to you, seeing as we're not seeing each other in person. Okay. Now the second, um, the second one is the experiment that we did last week with the scrunched up piece of paper and the flat piece of paper. And then the third one, it says dropping things on different parts of the earth. Okay, so you can read through that. Don't need to do it. Okay, don't need to do that one. I can't remember if you told if I can't remember I can't remember if I told you before. I think I did about the magnetic force acting on the earth. That if you're in the northern hemisphere and the summer southern hemisphere, that uh, water will. Um, swirl in the sink in a different direction. I think I told you that when we were doing magnets last year. Just thought of that there. Now, um, we're going to have a look at this one, okay, which on page four, where it says older children. We're going to design and make a parachute. We're going to try and reduce the effect of gravity, okay? So it says, can you make a parachute? Gravity pulls the parachute down but as it falls, air gets trapped under the canopy, okay, the material part of the, the top of the parachute. The trapped air pushes up against the canopy, making the parachute fall slowly. Can you design and make a parachute? Okay, so it says here, using a tissue and four threads, some sellotape and plasticine or a small Lego man, can you design and make a parachute and hang the plasticine Lego man from it? What happens if you add more plasticine? Does the parachute fall flat faster or slower? Now, your task, boys and girls, is to make a parachute. I did this, I remember when I was in teaching college, we were given this task. So there it says you have to use tissue and four threads, but you can use a kitchen cloth, you could use a piece of kitchen paper, um, you know, the kitchen towels. You could use um, a piece, a normal piece of paper, a piece of newspaper, tissue paper. You can use instead of threads. If you, thread is good because it's very light, but maybe you have wool or something else. Okay, so we're going to see. Can you make a parachute? It's not maybe it won't look like a parachute, but what it's going to do is, if you can attach it to an object that you can drop, so a Lego man, or maybe three pieces of lego stuck together it doesn't even have to be a lego man and then you could have the thread cut in you know or a piece of plasticine something that has a bit of weight okay drop it see how fast it it falls see how quickly it falls you can use the use a stopwatch even to measure it okay and then see if you can make a parachute that when you attach this item to it and drop the item the fall will be slower because the parachute the air is um, 
is pushing up against the canopy of the parachute and making the object fall forward. So again, air resistance. Can you do it? So let's see who can make the best parachute challenge. Okay. Um, now, the, the math for older children, you can have a look at it, but we're not going to focus on that today. Um, ah, this is very interesting. <laughs> Again, you don't have to do this, okay? But it says, let us give gravity on Earth the number... Oh, okay, no, I'm not going to read all that. Basically, if we look at the, 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 um, at the table there, okay? If you weigh 40 kilograms, for example, on Earth, you can work out by multiplying your weight by the gravity force, okay? You can find out what you would weigh on other planets. So the moon is done out there. Sorry, the moon isn't a planet. Um, if you multiply 40 by 0 0.16, okay? So I know that's a hard concept. You're not multiplying, like 40 multiplied by 1 is going to be 40. If you multiply 40 by 0 0.16, it's going to be 16 hundredths of 40, okay? But don't think about that, just do it with a calculator. And you can find out what you weigh on other planets. Now, it's done for you there if you weigh 40 kilograms. But if you weigh something else, you can go working it out. It's pretty cool. Now, um, then we get down to the bottom. Did you know? Because gravity is pulling with only about one-sixth of the force on Earth, astronauts can jump about four meters high on the moon. How high do you think you could jump on the moon? Okay, so if you multiply how you can jump now by six, you'll be able to get your answer. Being weightless may sound fun, but it can also cause problems. Liquids, foods, tools, and sleeping people have to be strapped down in spacecraft to keep them from just drifting away. Imagine trying to wash if the water keeps floating away. Oh my goodness. I think the people who are in my L2 class um, they saw that last year um, because I remember space food, the chapter about space food. I love space food, yes I do. It spoke about how astronauts sleep strapped onto the wall, standing up strapped onto the wall, and also they, they have to keep their food in bags and boxes. Um, astronauts get a bit taller and their muscles get weaker if they are experiencing weightlessness over time. They usually recover when they return to Earth, okay? And we read about last week how the twins, um, the one that comes back from space, would look older. Scientists are experimenting with growing plants in weightless conditions in the International Space Station in order to try to produce a biofuel faster. The results could help produce alternative energy crops on Earth, okay? So green energy. The European Space Energy is building a super robot called Eurobot with several hands and super strength, which will be able to do amazing things in, sp in space. Oh, you could look that one up. Now, useful websites. There are lots of interactive links there you can click on and explore more about this topic. But the main thing that I would like you to do is design a parachute, okay? If you can't, if you feel that you have nothing at home, I think you could be creative, but if you feel like you have nothing at home to design a parachute, okay, you could uh, just read all this information, um, inf investigate the links, and do some of the other activities that you read about on the page. Okay, right boys and girls, off you go. You have until Wednesday, so Monday, Monday and Tuesday, if you do it by Wednesday, even if you do it on Wednesday, that's okay, right? Bye.